CataractCoach.com Cataract surgery and granular corneal dystrophy. Should you do the surgery for the cataract first or first do the cornea? Here's the patient. You can see there's a lot of granular dystrophy here in the central zone, but not so much in the peripheral zone. Now, in this first eye, you can see it's a pretty opaque cataract, pretty dense cataract. Now, important to realize that this patient has lived with the corneal granular dystrophy for a long time. There you go. With the tripan blue dye, I look at the cornea now, and now you can really see those opacities. But the patients live with those for a very long time, and the cataract is the more acute change. So when the patient says, oh, in the last few years, my vision's really gotten very poor, well, look at this eye. It's not from the granular dystrophy. It's from the cataract. That's a pretty opaque cataract. So I agree with our surgeon here. Fix the cataract first. And that's going to be sufficient. And remember, while we sometimes have a perfectionist attitude of fixing everything, you know, sometimes you want to just make the patient happy. And if you can complete a nice, beautiful cataract surgery in this case and give the patient better vision than the patient's had in many years, that can be sufficient. And remember as well, it's very hard sometimes to treat this, treat granular dystrophy. So sometimes, I don't, you know, a definitive treatment may be doing a partial or lamellar corneal transplant, a DALF procedure. Sometimes people do a penetrating keratoplasty. In these cases, you may not have ability to secure that kind of graft or do that kind of procedure, and that's okay. So I think a stepwise approach here, first just doing the cataract surgery, and then Worry about the granular dystrophy later is actually a very reasonable way of doing things. So here you go, completing a nice looking capsorexis, all with just the cystotome. And so nice, dense cataract, white cataract, but not intumescent. There was really not much lens fluid or lens milk or liquefied lens cortex that leaked out. So now, nice spiral technique, by the way, of getting a really good capsorexis, beautifully centered, nicely round. That looks fantastic. Very nicely done. And then the nucleus is going to be removed any way you want. Chop, flip, flop, anything you like. Divide and conquer, stop and chop. Let's see what the surgeon's going to do here. Here comes a faker probe in the eye. Oh, first rotating it. It definitely rotates. I'll give you that. More viscoelastic to protect the endothelium. And then now get the instruments in the eye. Here's a, looks like a, like a chopper or a hook. And then faker probe in. And perhaps a chop technique here. So cleaning up some of that lens cortex. Okay, let's see how we get the nucleus out. Gonna make a little pit maybe and then dig in. Yeah, nice chop. Chop technique. Very nicely chopped. Rotating it. And then probably chopping again. There it is, another chop. And rotating again. So nucleus gonna be removed pretty easily. Now granular dystrophy in the cornea is pretty rare. I don't see it very often. Maybe one patient a year, sometimes even less than that in my clinic. And I agree with this surgeon. My my approach is. Look at the eye and say, determine, well, what percent of the visual problems are due to what problem? And you can do this for a patient with all kinds of issues. Let's say you see a patient with a cataract, plus the patient also has macular degeneration. Well, look in the macula and say, okay, how bad is the macular degeneration? What percent of the patient's visual issues right now, the visual problems, are from the cataract? And what percent are from the macular degeneration? Or in this case, what percent of the issue is from the cataract versus what percent of the issue is from the corneal granular dystrophy. And once you kind of get this uh, idea in your head, you can say, okay, present it to the patient and set reasonable expectations. So in this patient, I would say that probably the lion's share, two-thirds or even 70, 80% of the visual problem is from that really white cataract. And only a small part, maybe 20 or 30% of the visual issue is from the granular dystrophy. So we're turning this patient back to having a clear lens and just having to deal with only the granular dystrophy is likely going to be sufficient to make the patient very happy in the post-op period. And then again, you can always address things later. In a case like this, I'd either aim for emetropy or perhaps just a little bit of mild myopia in the post-op period. I think that tends to be the most useful. As our friend Tom Oding always says, minus one, it's a good place to be. And so now here comes the lens, looks like a single piece acrylic lens going in the capsule bag, and the rest of the case can be finished up nicely. And now, as you see, with the lens in the bag, here it goes nice and easy into the capsule bag, beautiful control here. As you can see now, there's the granular dystrophy material, and the patient, again, is going to achieve a reasonable post-op visual outcome and not really have much issue. And should there be a need 
or desire to address the corneal problems in the future, that can certainly be done. But at this point, yeah, just do the cataract. The patient will be very happy. Great case. Thanks for the video. And thank you for watching.